الله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تمتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق من حزب الجهة وبث منهما رجال كثير ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والرحام إن الله كان عليكم مقيضا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا وصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم ما بعد إن خير الكلام كلام الله سبحانه وتعالى وخير هدى هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشهر الأمور محدثاتها إن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وبعد الحمد لله والفرز الله سبحانه وتعالى والسيك السلام والسيك السلام والسيك السلام والسيك السلام الله تبارك وتعالى from the evil within ourselves, from all of the bad consequences of all of our evil deeds. Musa guides as a favor, as a gift, and out of his knowledge and wisdom that none can lead him astray. Musa leads to their own desires and that which is from the <coughs> tricks and the footsteps of evil. Then none will be able to guide that person after Allah has left him astray. I bear witness that there is no deity that has the right to be worshipped except Allah, the Rabbah wa Ta'ala, and the Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is his last final messenger and the servant of Allah, the Rabbah wa Ta'ala. Tonight, <coughs> we thank Allah subhanahu wa Ta'ala who has given us another opportunity to do one of the greatest acts of worship. Do one of the acts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has connected to the descending of the angels, the mercy and the rahmah, and the tranquility that the believers <coughs> receive. And that is talab the ilm al seeking the beneficial Islamic knowledge. And that knowledge on Tabaraku wa Ta'ala has commanded us to seek that knowledge. Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala has commanded us to seek that knowledge. And he said, Fa'lam annahu la ilaha illahu. Fa'lam annahu la ilaha illallah. Wa astaghfir li dhamdik wa lal mu'mineen wa lal mu'minat al ayah. Wa Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam the meaning in English, then you should know that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. And this phrase, Fatlam, it means Hata'allam, means to study, to see, Hata Takun ala Bayina, until you become upon clarity with regards to the knowledge or the issue at hand. So Allah wa Ta'ala told the best of the creation, the last of the prophets, the seal of them, the chief of them on the day of judgment that he has to seek knowledge, he has to embark upon that which is <coughs> the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with knowledge preceding actions. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, <coughs> Then after you have the knowledge, seek forgiveness for your sins. Seek forgiveness for your sins. Because how can you seek forgiveness if you don't know the one who you should be seeking it from? And then Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala was not unmindful of the believers as Allah told them, Walil Mu'mineen, Walil Mu'minat, and ask Allah also for the believing men and women. Wallahu ya'lamu mutakallabakum wa ma'awakum. And Allah He knows all the actions and movements and what you do in open and secret. So this is the reason that we came together, Bith Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala, tonight. And tomorrow. And we apologize for those people that <clears throat> were coming to start at 6. We ran behind schedule because of technical things, but you know, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us better. 
But our intention is to cover tonight from 6 to 8. And if we go a little bit over, it's okay for me, the issue of marriage. And then tomorrow, because really two days is not enough, and we want to try to summarize as best I can, tomorrow from 4 to 8. And of course, we will take breaks, you know, to pray and bathroom and drinks and stuff like that. But this is an important issue. And wallahi, you know, I want to thank our, our, our dear beloved brother, Sheikh Yusuf Reels. He's not going to like this because he doesn't like praise, but we like, I want to thank him personally because, you know, he gave a piece of advice one night on Facebook as he was writing, and it brought me to tears when he was talking about the disheartening information and the uh, 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 co-occurring back-to-back uh, 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 mental and physical abuse in the name of marriage. And, you know, subhanAllah, it's a big issue. It's not just the African-American issue, as we have issues as a people. It's not just the issue of people that are in America, but also we find that the people from their own backgrounds, <coughs> be it Arab or indo pak or <coughs> what we call, you know, Latino, you know, Caucasian, you name it, any race. When you talk about us being the nation of Oma, we're struggling with this issue. We're struggling with this issue. Here locally in the States, in Canada, you know, along with the island, across the borders, we're struggling. And so we want to take a look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger and the scholars have explained about this issue of marriage. So I, I entitled it the, uh, who has the fly? I have the fly on one? Oh. The one I sent out. The one you sent out? Yeah, I entitled it um, something like marriage before and after. So marriage is the issue, but things happen before the marriage. There are catastrophe, it leads up to the problems in the marriage, and then after you get married, you know, uh, uh, which that's the before, then you have the after you got married. So you have marriage, the problems that stem before you even get married, and then now you're married, then you have the problems that continue after you got married. And we said the uh, realities and the uh, resolution, because some people, Allah Musta'an, they're in a the bubble when it comes to this issue. They think like, what we're doing is really okay and we're married, but that's not the reality. And we'll see as we bring a lot of the different um, textual proofs and ex explanations and examples, you'll see that our reality is not what Allah and His Messenger told us as it relates to marriage and Islam. And then we need resolutions. Who can tell me what is resolution? What is the term resolution? Mm -hmm. Say, say it louder. Promise, maybe. Yeah. No, no. no resolution. So you guys got devices, right? Y'all use it for everything. Yeah. Google or Ask Six. Siri or Sherry or Ahmed or Mike or Dick or whatever you call your iPad yes. man. Yes. Ask them what is the meaning of resolution. Solutions. A solution. It's okay, a somebody said solution. Fix. Okay, solution. What else? Fix. Fix? To men. To men. Okay, yeah. what else? When they say New York, several meanings. New York resolution is like a the promise that no gonna resolution. Make. Resolution yeah. is different from solution. Oh. Resolution or outsa men and yani solution. Resolution. Okay, so you are looking or y'all got y'all guessing? It's also a mental state. Okay. I hope y'all looking. It's also a mental state of oh, somebody's looking at the definition. Okay, can we look at the definition? Now all that trash I'll be washing that y'all gotta make toe before y'all can look up resolution. That's why we gotta have this seminar. That's right. Resolution. Can somebody find the definition and read it for us? But for the people. Somebody said it, right? Yes, sir. You ready? Yes. Read the last of the people in the air can hear. If you need my mic, I'll give it to you. It's a formal expression of opinion or intention made usually after voting. That's one definition. 
We don't want, that's not relative. We want the one that's relative to what we're talking about. Marriage. I got um, a firm decision to do or not do something. Barak Alokin, a firm decision to do or not do something. Continue. In context, there's some more. The quality of being determined or, re or resolute. The, the quality of being determined or resolute. Okay? Anything else contextual as it relates to problems in marriage? So, the mental state, the mental state of quality of being resolved or resolute, firmness or purpose. Okay. So, if we look at that definition, all of that has to do with marriage before and after. Because of Tababu Ta'ala, even in his book, he mentioned the issue of Nashus. Sometimes the shoes, the English meaning of this word, uh, marital discord, is on behalf of the woman, and sometimes it's on behalf of the man. So when we look at this issue, then that's why I said, yeah, the marriage before, after, it's realities, resolutions, and then I said it's sicknesses and it's cure. Because the life has a sickness. If you have what's called the illa, something that's in a thing that's wrong, it can look like it's right, but underneath that thing, you have a sickness. And for every sickness, the Prophet mentioned that Allah has given a cure except that which is yani haraj, what haraj was most, and that's except death. Everything else can be fixed. So inshallah tabarak wa ta'ala, we will take from one of the famous books of Imam Muwaffaq <coughs> al-Din, Abi Muhammad <coughs> Ibn al-Qadama al maqdisi a famous book, and the Shaykh he summarizes. He has books that first you summarize, then he has a book after that, he covers the same topics, he brings detail, and he brings more evidence, and then he has the next book that explains with more detail, and then he has like an encyclopedia. So we're taking the base book, the foundational book, and that book is called Umda to Fil Fiqh. Umda, foundations. Because you need a foundation for everything. And Fi Fiqh, here means how you apply the religion. But you can't apply the religion without knowledge. As we mentioned the ayah, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّهُ أَوْ فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ I mean, you have to have knowledge before you can even worship Allah. So if that's the case, then what about in the other things that you're going to be doing, like marriage? You have to have the knowledge. So we're going to use from that book, and we'll take some explanation from some people that's alive. One of them, from the city of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's a well-known scholar, Muhammad Mada. <coughs> Ibn Muhammad al-Shimqiti. He explained that book, and you can find the explanation in Arabic on the internet, on YouTube, live in the Prophet's Masjid. And then, <coughs> also, our beloved Sheikh from Kuwait, Uthman Qamis. And we also have some hadith we will take a look at from both the Bukhari and Muslim and Tirmidhi that are related to the top. So the first thing we want to take is <coughs> point number one, what is the ruling for marriage? Because some of the brothers, they're telling the women, marriage is an obligation. And especially when it comes to them, uh, <laughs> It's something that's spreading around from the men. They're telling the women, it's my right to take another wife. It's my right to take another wife. And then you have some brothers, just the issue of marriage themselves. Some of them said it's mustahab, it's recommended. And the others said, no, it's wajib. You have to, because Allah said, and the Prophet said. And then 
you have some of the scholars that have clearly argued that issue and said that it's allowed. There's a difference between al-mubah wa madha al-mustahab. Al-mubah, madha wa al-mustahab, al There's a difference between what's just allowed and what's encouraged. So we want to take a look at, firstly, what is the ruling for al-zawajah wa nikah What is the ruling for marriage and Islam, <coughs> whether you use the word nikah or you use the word watch. <coughs> the ulama, they said, al-nikah, firstly the meaning, yutlaq, yani ma'da, ala, ma'da yutlaq, ala, al-aqid, wa jima'ah. They said the word nikah is used in two ways. Either it means sexual intercourse, or it means to tie something together. To tie something together, like you tie two plants together at the root because you want to breed them. Or you tie two goats together to make a knot. So nikah has that meaning, or it also means to join in the <coughs> issue of intercourse. So what is the ruling? We want to know from the floor. What is the ruling of nikah? And I should have told somebody to go to my page on your device, log into my page, but keep the volume down so that if the people online have any questions, we can entertain them. Because a lot of times we don't do that. So I'm going to ask Imam Shaheed if he can go to Marcus Safino to know on his device, cut it down low, and just periodically look to see if people have questions when. Like now, we're asking what is the ruling for nikah. So from the floor, what is the ruling for so nikah? I'm going to ask you about from the sisters or the brothers, what is the ruling? Meaning, is it wajib? It's a must. Is it haram? Prohibited. Is it mustahat? Recommended. Encouraged. Is it allowed? Just something that you could do, or is it? Yani macro. What is the ruling for marriage? Okay, go ahead, mustahab. MashaAllah, one we have from the floor said mustahab. That means someone should be encouraged to do it. If they do it, then they'll get a reward. If they don't do it, then they don't get any sin on them. This is the meaning of mustahab. You're encouraged to do it. And if you do it, you'll be rewarded. You're encouraged to do it. If you don't do it, there's no sin on you. Marriage, the ruling for marriage. Somebody said mustahab. Anybody else? Wajib. 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 Now, wajib. Wajib means you have to do it. No way of getting around. And if you do it, somebody said wajib. Anybody else? Wajib if you are able to. Huh? Wajib if you are able to. No, 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 no. We want to rule it. Stay on the same page. He said watch it. He said recommend it. Is there another outlook, another perspective? Strongly recommended. No. Strongly recommended? Not putting that out there. We didn't say that. We said watch it. That means you have to do it. If you do it, you get a reward. If you don't, you'll be punished. We said mustahab, these are the five ahkam, the five things that it can be. If you recommend it to do it, you do it, you get a reward. If you don't do it, there's no sin on you. Then you have marriage could be haram. Marriage could be haram. Don't do it. If you do it, there's a sin on you. If you leave it, alhamdulillah, you'll be rewarded for leaving the haram. Then you have mubah. Mubah. It's like something being allowed. Like you have a passport. When you have a passport, you're not recommended by the government to travel. You're not binding by the government to travel. They allow you to travel. So mobile is, you're allowed to get married. If you do it, okay. If you don't, that's on you. But you're not recommended, and it's not binding on you. It's only allowed. That is what's called mobile. And then, you have that which is makroha. You can do it, but it's detested because it may put you in a precarious situation. So these are the only five things that marriage can be. 
according to all of the ulama of Islam, past and present, up to this very moment. So somebody said, recommend it. Somebody else said, watch it. Anybody think that it's mubah, only allowed? Nobody said that, huh? Play it. <coughs> Some said that it is mubah, allowed. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam an authentic hadith and some of the narrations that this wording comes in there is some criticism about it but there are enough chains and enough narrations that the scholars of hadith have said that it is okay. Now that is from Salim. He mentioned that there are four things from Sunan al-Mursaleen. Four things from the ways of the prophets and the messengers. He said, Araba, yani min sunan mursaleen. There are four things from the ways of the prophets and messengers. So that means all of the prophets and messengers all the way to Muhammad. The first thing he said, al hayau al hayau being Not to just do things. Then the Prophet said, Pa'apu, from Atro. Y'all need to wear, y'all need oils or perfume to smell good. It's not from the ways of the prophets and messengers to, y'all need to be smelling. Of course, they're not just putting on Atro without washing. They're washing. But they're putting on, you know, fragrances. And we know this is something from Salaam. It's highlighted in his son. He loved the plea, the ta'utr. The Prophet he said the third thing was siwak, cleaning the mouth. How many times, you know, we have the issue of people not cleaning the mouth. The Prophet wouldn't come in the house until he cleaned his mouth. Imagine, you go to the door of your house, and before you stick your key in, you know, you put a mint in your mouth. Or you got a small mouthwash. You put it, you garden, you, you know, spit it in the in the dirt. Or if you use a miswak, you clean your mouth. So that when you go in and you give salams and you know, hopefully we're still greeting one another. We're not so tied up with devices and personal affairs that we don't even greet one another. We don't want to come in and your breath is smelling and you're in your wife's face. No. So the third thing, the Salam said, what's the whack? And the last thing, a nikah, marriage. So the fact that the Prophet mentioned four things that's from the ways of the prophets and messengers. The first one again, the Prophet he said, Mada and Hayao. To have yani, shyness, to be sinful, to have shyness, to just be wild and to just do stuff. No. The Prophet said, the Haya, Imani. That being shy is a part of Iman. We don't mean a person is quiet in the corner, but they sneaky and they doing stuff bad. We don't mean a person don't speak when you're around, but when you ain't around, they doing this, they loud, they cursing. We mean someone is bashful. They don't want to annoy people. They don't want to make a problem. They are careful how they interact. And most of all, there are issues that that person won't do because they were ashamed to ruin their reputation and their deen. Then the Prophet he said, the second thing, to use oils and good smelling things, fragrances. We know that some ulama have said perfumes and colognes are haram because they have a word in the ingredients of a whole. But we explained when we were in Yemen that there's a pharmaceutical word called alcohol. They put it in perfumes. They put it in, you know, um, sometimes mouthwash. And it's not alcohol, the same thing they mean when they talk about whiskey and wines. Like rubbing alcohol. They said some people used to drink that to get drunk. You go ahead if you like. 70%, 100% rubbing alcohol. Drink to you, you know, drop dead. But... We know that's not the same thing as what they call alcohol, whiskey, and scotch, and bourbon, and, you know, beer. No. 
So this, in the Prophet is mentioned, يعني, to perfume and to put oils and like this. Then to clean the mouth and the last thing, the main thing, the highlight out of these four things, the marriage. So the first thing the Ulama, they said, this is the proof that marriage is not wajib because he says sunan and mursali, a way of all of the prophets. And we know that we're not compelled to follow anybody's way and legislation and sunnah except Muhammad. We're not compelled to follow the way of Isa, Musa, Dawood, and those other prophets. And they might have things that are similar, like he mentioned, all of these things, all of them do. All of them, they, they do. But this has a bearing on whether the ruling is to be wajib, you have to get married, mustahab, recommended, or mubah, allowed. And this hadith has been narrated on many of the Sahaba. It's been narrated on the authority on the authority of Abi Najih. It's been narrated on the authority of Aisha. It's been narrated on the on the authority of Thoban. It's been narrated on the authority of Uthman. And the reason this is done so that people can understand the validity of this hadith. Because we said there are some changes in narration that this hadith comes in that are not so credible, but because it's narrated by so many companions and those chains are not like the ones that are criticized, then we know this hadith is authentic. So the first thing we look at is those scholars because there is a debate between scholars. Some of them say that it is watching, marriage is watching, and we're going to talk about that. And we're going to dissect and put rules on the table to see how to solve that argument. Some scholars said marriage is watching, meaning you have to. Some of them said it's highly recommended. And some of them said it is allowed. So the first evidence, the first thing that you will look at is this hadith. The fact that the Prophet says, Sun al Mursaleen, the way of the prophets and messengers. So that evidence, the wording, the way of the prophets and messengers, that you know it's not watching. You know it can't be according to that evidence. Whoever uses that hadith, it can't be said that marriage is an obligation because we're not commanded to follow anybody's sunnah other than the prophet. Other than the prophet. And so this is one of the evidence that the scholars use to say that marriage is not wajib because he coined the phrase nikah the action you can to be the way of all of the prophets and messengers. And this is why the Prophet he mentioned in the Nuzul Isa, Sayyidat Zawwaj, Wasiyakul, Yani, Yani Mada Minhu, Yani Awlad. And that's what the Prophet he said when Isa comes back. Although he did not marry, before his soul is taken and he's going back to Allah. He's going to descend and do those things on earth that Allah, as a just prophet, told us about. And from amongst them, he will marry and will have children. Because the Prophet said, Sunan al Mursaleen, all of the prophets and messengers. So, this in itself is the evidence that the marriage, according to this hadith, is not watching. It's not watching. At best, it's recommended. Why? Because all of the prophets and messengers, they did it. Who are the best people on the face of the earth? Prophets and messengers. So anything that they do, we're encouraged. Yeah, and at, 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 at least we're encouraged to do it. At most, it could be wajib if it's issues of worship and, and, and salat, because that's for all mankind. That's the tahid, that's the iman. But when we talk about customary, such as marriage, or, you know, as Prophet Salaam he mentioned, you know, things like putting on something that smells good, or, you know, uh, uh, washing a certain way, or cleaning the mouth. We know these are customary things, so they're recommended. 
according to the statement of the Prophet concerning all of the prophets and messengers. Then you have those scholars, they argued the point that the Prophet he mentioned in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. This hadith is in the <coughs> jami of Imam Al-Tirmadiyu in the word of the Prophet said, Alaykum bin Ba'a. Alaykum bin Ba'a. Alaykum, normally when someone tells you in Arabic, Alaykum, that means you have to do it. If, if, if a person says, Alaykum bin Sunnah, that means you have to follow the Sunnah. If a person says, Alaykum bin Rifqa, yani Rifq is gentleness, and they're telling you, you have to be gentle. So here the Prophet is the word in the Imam al and they said, we went out, a group of the youth with the Prophet and he said to us, Alaykum bin Ba'a, I command you with marriage. Ba'a here means marriage. But in the wording, the wording in, 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 in the the Bukhari Muslim who said, he said, Ya ma'ashar al-shabab, man istata'a minkum al-ba'a, falyat is a witch. So when you look at both of the words, the Bukhari, and the Muslim, and then the jami of Imam al-Tirmadiyu, al-dahir and the wajibah. Al-dahir and the nikah and the wajibah. The apparent issue at hand when you look at the text, you come away with the conclusion that it's an obligation. Why? The Prophet in the one hadith in the Tirmadiyu, he said, Alaykum bin Ba'a. I command you. This Alaykum means you have to do it. And then in the hadith in Bukhari Muslim, the Prophet he said, Fariyat is a witch. The fire and the lamp together shows Amr, fil Amr. So the seller in the wording here is saying that you have to get married. But there's some rules in the religion. There's some rules in the religion that govern language, tone, and context. Mm -hmm. To the point that a person can say something in a manner that is commanding or mandating, but it does not carry the meaning of a mandate. A person can say something in a manner, in a wording, in a context that everyone that hears it or reads it says, we got to do it. But the ruling Islamically may not be that for a number of reasons. One of them, the statement of Allah Tabarakul wa Ta'ala in the Quran that they also use to say that marriage is wajib now the brothers they go smile when we complete this ayah. They love this ayah. It may not be the same for the women. But the brothers they smile when you complete this, when, when you take the middle. When you take the beginning, the brothers sit on the edge of their seat. When you take the middle, they smile and they grin. And when you take the end, the brothers they frown and the sisters they pop pom cheer. And the Tabarakul wa Ta'ala says, Fankihu ma'al qabalakum. Fankihu means marriage. Command form. Ma'al qabal. Ma'al qabalakum. That of your choice. Ma'al qabalakum min a. Min an nisa'i. From the women of your choice. Now I have started like that because. قبل الإسلام في أيام الجاهلية ما كان عندهم يعني ما ضاع النظام ولا حدود في نكاح. They had no rules or regulations, no borders, no boundaries or restrictions before Islam. So that's why a man may have a hundred wives, twenty wives, wasn't no rules and regulations. So Allah started with something that they could relate to. Then Allah said, after He said من النساء مثنى Two, three, four. Who can tell me what those numbers signify? Huh? 
He said a lot of rock out to the salah. Believe me, before you get married and when you get married and after you get married, you better be making a lot of rock out to the salah. Jazakumallah <laughs> khairah. Allah, if we only knew. Subhanallah. Two, three, four. What is this indicative of in the ayah? Huh? The women you can marry. The women you can marry. What about them? They got to be two years old, three years old, four years old. What? What do the numbers represent? The actual number of wives. How many wives you can have? Huh? How many wives you can have? How many wives you can have? So two, three, and four. How much does that equal? Seven. Seven. Two and three is what? Five. Five plus four is what? Just add nine. So Allah said, marry nine women of your choice. Are you sure? I say either three or uh, two or three or four. Oh. Either two, three or four. Now, wala in the nap, yeah, they have a couple of fecum. A tawa if the bolada, you first see who had the ayah ala hada. Who ala a, who ala an ala subhanahu wa ta'ala, Amrahum, and yet the zoat, you let us out. We have some groups. That they have distorted the meaning and they have come away with just what we said in the beginning. That add these numbers up, and this is what Allah has commanded us to do to marry up to nine women. Can you believe that? But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His Prophet made clear that this Yani is saying two, three, or four. Because wa here. Means, yani al kafiyah in Arabic, means concession to follow the tarfiyah. Sometimes the wa in the Arabic language, jabi ma'na aw, yani ma'da tahiyah. Sometimes the wa means aw, which aw means or. So here, it doesn't mean wa as an example to. And three and four equals nine. No, it means two out or three out four. And this is one of the five either in the Luma to the Arabia. This is one of the benefits of knowing the Arabic language. So here, that part of the ayah, many of the ulama they have said this is the proof that marriage is wajib because Allah said in command form. Then Allah said, Matna, Tula Ta Ruba, two, three, or four. And then Allah said, Wa in khiptum alla ta'dilu wahidatan awma malakat aymanuhu. And if you fear, Huna, Wallah Mustan, if you had a million hijab, a million brothers, you ask them, do you fear if you had two? three or four women, that you wouldn't be just? Well, like, I guarantee you, 99% of them are going to say, no, nah, I don't fear I won't be just. No, -uh, I won't be just. I don't fear. But Allah said, well, in khiftu, Allah ta'adilu. If you fear that you won't be just. The word here, in khiftu, has two meanings. You are afraid because you know yourself that you won't do right by them. And the second meaning, that you're not sure if you can do right by them. So here, with the Tabarakul Tasim al Khibtum, if you want to take a chance, and there's a great possibility, they say, Al Ghaliba Annaka, let the Ad do Bain and Zojain. In most cases, you know, you won't be just. What's being fair? What do they mean when they say just and fair, <coughs> the ulama, about this part of the ayah? What is being just and fair if you have more than one wife? No, let's start with one wife. Because Allah says, when khiftum, Allah ta'dilu, wa wa'amilu. So, what is being just with one wife? Give me an, ex an ex example. Now, salam alaykum. Wa alaykum salam, Shaykh. Wa alaykum salam, um, being fair with them in terms of giving them 
just about the same thing returned we're not putting one in the marriott hotel and put one in hotel six you know being like that kind of fear of them in terms of possession and not in terms of love where you feel you know one you feel you don't show um, more love for one than the other hey so if Shakey said that you treat them almost the same, you don't have one in a nice house and one in a motel. So what if one of them came out of the projects? Or one of them grew up in the village? And they said, now we read the idea and make the law say, now we read the law and make the law say, this is enough for me, I don't need nothing bigger, this and that. While the other one came from middle class or even low class, but they didn't come from the project. Because you said you got to keep them, you know, almost like equal. Don't have one in a hotel. So one is used to staying in a small spot. They don't want nothing big. The other one, I can't live with nothing small. Uh-uh. I grew up in a house with five rooms and two and a half toilets. Would that be considered being out the vein as OJ? Right. So I said no. You have to maintain the standard of living. In the manner in which they were accustomed. You have to maintain a standard of living. So if one is living in a shack, you, may, you can maintain a standard of living. You can upgrade, but you maintain a standard of living in a shack. Yeah, you're going to have to. Tell you, the point here, you know, there are different ways to be you know, fair and, and, and just. The main thing that we need to understand, the opposite of this Part where Allah said, with Hibta and Latayilu, that will be easier to understand as long as you don't make bullet to the lady. So as long as the lady don't feel that you're wronging her, or that you're doing something to infringe upon her rights, then you can understand that you are being just. If the lady is being oppressed, meaning there's clearly something wrong in the treatment. Or, there's something that is a harm to that lady, then this, you could understand, is not being what Allah said, يعني, uh, for you to be just with the women. As far as in your heart, how you feel, you can't go, يعني, for example, and turn your heart this way or that way. You can't control who you love, who you don't love. But it's talking about the treatment, the interaction, given the things that should be given to any individual in the relationship. So when we go back to the beginning, why did Allah Ta'ala reveal this verse in the first place? Because it was talking about an alternative to dealing with the orphan lady. And so the ulama, they said, the fact that Allah Tabarakul wa ta'ala was dealing with the issue of the orphans and told them as an alternative to marry the women of their choice rather than to marry an orphan and abuse them, then although the wording is in the command form, the ruling can't be a command because Allah was given a solution to something. So whenever something yani, is a, uh, as they say, a, 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 uh, a, a uh, solution, or yani, something is a uh, particular ruling, it's cost, yani, as opposed to something that's on, then you can't say that that thing is the obligation. Also, they said, when you look at the statement of the Prophet sallallahu he said, which He commanded in that hadith Ibn Mas'ud, used the command form of marrying. But the Prophet in the beginning, he said, <clears throat> Whoever has the ability, and ba'a. Ba'a, they said, the word that they use in this hadith, the Prophet sallam, <clears throat> the word that the, the prophet uses to describe marriage, they said it doesn't mean physically only. Because 
in most cases, unless Allah has tested the person, in most cases, every person has the ability to have a desire for a woman. Every person has a a a a a a, a shahwa. So Allah's messenger wasn't talking about that. The Prophet Sallam was talking about maliya. You have monetary ability to marry the lady. So if a person doesn't have that, then how can marriage be watching? Because in our religion, everything is based on what? Ability. So those scholars who argue in light of the ayah in Surah Al-Ma'idah, because of the outward wording and the hadith of the prophet, then we understand that those scholars who said the origin of marriage, the origin of it is that it's mobile, then this is the correct opinion, that it is, is allowed. And the only time it becomes wajib, the ulama, they said, in the khafa ala nafsi zina, when you feel that you're going to fall in a state of falling into zina. Then now it becomes watching. Because they said that which can't be achieved without certain things being involved, then that thing that has to be achieved, the steps to it becomes watching. So if it's watching for you to stay out of zina, it's wajib for you to stay away from the clubs. It's wajib for you to stay out of the streets. It's wajib for you to stop running around and you screwing these women. Then the steps that help you achieve that becomes the same as the objective, watching. So nikah is the thing that the Prophet said. Marriage is the thing that will stop you from that. Mm -hmm. And that's why the scholars said if a person is in the situation where he fears he's going to fall into zina. Likewise, this applies for the women. She fears she's going to fall into a zina, then it becomes wajib. But the origin of marriage, mubah. Why? Because some people don't have the ability. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to make something compulsory on the whole of mankind when the whole of mankind doesn't have the ability. So this is very important in the beginning when we talk about marriage because many of the brothers, again, they outright just manipulate the situation, especially when they want to marry a second wife. They tell the wives, it's wajib, you know, it's my right. I have to do it. Allah musta'an. We haven't heard any of the ulama say that marriage, whether it's singularly or Plural is the right of a man. I don't know where they invented that from. Maybe Shaitan gave them revelation. But there's no place for that in the religion to say that it's my right, sister. I have to get married in the religion. And the origin of marriage, majority of the scholars say it's allowed. It's not wajib. And in some cases it is. It is when a person is offended when they fall into the of course. And in some cases it becomes recommended. But the origin, it's a mubah. Then the Prophet in the Hadith of Allah bin Mas'ud, <coughs> he said, فَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْتُطِعْ Before that he said, فَإِنَّهُ مَاذَا أَحْسَرَ لِلْفَوَجْ It is something that will save the private parts. What will save the private parts? Marriage. It will save the private parts from being in places, being with women, or being with men, if it's a woman, that you shouldn't be with. The marriage is the solution here. And it will help you to lower your gaze. So if you take this part of the hadith, then we understand that, as the ulama they said, what is the problem that a man would have one wife and he has to make a zina? What is the situation that a man will have two, three, even four wives and he still has to make a zina? They said, and why are we saying the men? It's not because women don't fall into this, but 
the reason to come sell them, they said, said, yeah, my Shabbat, Shabbat, he was talking to the males, because the males have a greater shahawa. And the home, yani, a shiddah a a They have a great desire for intercourse. That's how Allah made them. So when the women sometimes, you know, they try to say, you know, things about a man's sexuality, it's too many proofs in the Quran and Sunnah that that's how Allah made the male. And this is one of the wisdoms of allowing him more than one wife. Not that that's the only thing, but this is one of the main things we talk about staying out of sin. So back to the point, if a man, his reason for getting married is to lower his gaze and to save his private parts from being in the haram. Then if he gets married, as Imam Fozan said, then whenever that person has a desire, he should go to his wife. Mm -hmm. He shouldn't go to the street, look around. He shouldn't go to the internet, chat room. No, he should go to his wife. Because that's the purpose of getting married. One of the reasons for getting married. To sanctify your private parts. Likewise, it should also make that person understand the seriousness, the seriousness of, of a zina. He should understand that a zina, making illegal intercourse, is not a game because he got married to prevent himself from that in the first place. So if a person has a wife and he's still making zina, it's not because the marriage is not the cure. And it's not because the Prophet said him lied, but it's because that person is not controlling his desires. He's not controlling his desires. And they give the example when the Prophet he said, Whoever can't get married, meaning he doesn't have the money. Not he doesn't have the ability, unless he's impotent, he has a problem with the sexual organ. Most males are created with that ability. Even as a baby. Has the ability that the private part functions. So the prophet is talking about Maulia. Why? Because one of the rights of the lady is for you to take care of her. So the prophet said, he said whoever doesn't have the monetary ability, then I tell him to fast. Sheikh what they mean, he said, this is the proof that masturbation is haram. He said, because the way of the Prophet وسلم, Sunnah يعني, وسلم, <clears throat> so وسلم, if he had two ways that was halal, two ways that was halal, he would choose the easy of the two rights. I mean, the, the easy of the two roads, pardon me. You know how to say, don't work too hard, Akhi. Are well, you working hard or hardly working? But I say, no, nah, man, I'm hardly working because I'm working smart. While you working hard, you're killing yourself. And you don't have to do that. So the prophet would choose the easy of the routes. Who can tell me why he would choose the easy of the routes? Why would the prophet, if he had two ways that was halal, choose the easiest of the two? Why would he choose the hardest one to show, I'm the messenger. I'm strong. I'm the Nabi. I ain't no punk. You know how we do. We jive like that. We'll try to, you know, lift the refrigerator to prove we're not weak and we're not soft. All of that ejaculation. Rather than getting a dolly or asking two people to help. I got it. Why would the prophet take the hard way? Why would he take the easy of the two ways? Make it easy for us. MashaAllah. He said, perhaps to make it easy for us. Somebody else. Save energy for uh, other things. Save energy for other things. Very good. As an example, to show us the way, make it easy for us, and to save energy for other things. MashaAllah. Anybody else? Think. Why would the prophet choose? What is the significance of choosing the easier of two ways? They're both okay. There's no harm if you choose this way over that way. So what's the big deal of choosing the easier of the two? Was he lazy? Better chance. Huh? 
better chances of, like the, the brother was saying, overburdening one. So I was just saying that it's better chances of being consistent in doing it. Better chance of being consistent in doing it. That's a good point. Somebody else? Overburdening oneself. Overburdening oneself. Hey. If you look at all of those answers that you gave, and there's no one right one, I know that's the thing for Mugler, but I mean, uh, Isha, but we're going to get laid up. The, the huh? Yeah. The ulama, they said, al qastu sharia al taysir lil mushakka al maqsud fi sharia the reason that Allah said the legislation, Sharia here means the legislation, Quran and Sunnah. Let Taysir for ease, let Mushakka as it relates to difficulty. Al Tabarra for what Allah said, Wa ma ja'al Allahu fi deen al haraj. Allah has not made in the deen things to make it difficult for you. So think about it. If masturbation was the easier way, and somebody might say, man, it's easy to me, because man, heck, fasting, man, I can fast. And man, in the summertime, and man, I'd be so thirsty, and then I got to work. Logically speaking, he might have a point. But why didn't the prophet pick it if it was the two of the ways that's halal and it's easier? Because it's not from the two ways that's halal. Masturbation is halal. Had it been halal, and it's the easier, he would have had to pick it. Because from his sunnah, from the reason the sharia was set, is to lift difficulty and to give you ease in place of that. So that's what the Fusalim said, فَمَلَمْ يَسْتُطِعْ فَعَلَيْكُمْ مَعْدَى بِسْتِمْتَعْ Masturbation, no, he said, فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسْتِمْتَعْ I command you to fast. فَإِنَّهُ مَعْدَى which are, because it's going to weaken. I remember the question over and over and over to the scholars concerning people that are single and they're <coughs> seeking knowledge. They said, man, I've been fasting Mondays and Thursdays and the three days when the moon is full. It's not working. My desires are still through the roof. I said, yeah, I hate the said, it will calm down your sexual desire. Yeah, I know that. The Hadith of Sahih. I, I understand. I believe it. I memorized it. But I'm telling you, for me, it ain't working. <laughs> Sheikh Muhammad, a Shemkiti, he said, if you tell yourself that I can't do it, then you're going to be somebody who's not going to be able to do it. If you say, I can't do it, mind over matter, you're going to be in a situation where you can't do it. He gave the story about a man was being advised. Stop smoking, stop smoking, stop smoking, stop smoking. Advising him, advising him, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years. And his whole thing was, I can't stop, I can't stop, I can't stop. Then one day, he said, you know what? I'm going to try to stop. Then he stopped. And then, what do you think happened when he stopped? Keep saying, I can do it. Allah took his soul and he died on Toba. SubhanAllah. Now, for some of us, that's not close to home, but the point is that the Prophet Sallallahu told us for the one who can't get married, he gave the solution to fasting. And if someone is fasting, but he's looking at things that keeps his desires up. If someone is fasting, but all he's thinking about is, man, it's hard. I gotta, I, I need, I, I, you know, I need to get married. I need to go up in something. I need to, I need to. He's not busy himself with things that will take his mind off of it. He's not lowering his gaze. He's not doing the things that will help him physically and mentally stay in the realm that the prophet said to avoid it. Then he's not going to avoid it. So what does all of this say 
when we talk about the beginning. What is the ruling of marriage? Is it wajib? Is it mustahab, recommended? Wajib meaning binding on you. Is it mubah, you know, uh, 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 something that's only allowed? It's up to you. If it's something that the Prophet ﷺ commanded you to do, you got to have money to do it. What is all of this about? It shows you the greatness of marriage. Because the brothers were lying, they think it's a game. Some of the cases we hear were lying. Brothers didn't even treat women like that in Jahiliya. You have a Muslim wife. Somebody you married in the name of Zawaj. And we have all of these social problems from the before you get married to the now you marry and the after you get married. It's because they don't realize the greatness of marriage. They don't. And this is the same thing for the women, except that we see the women, Allah Musta'an, maybe being enablers to a lot of the brothers. While at that same time, the brothers are the one with intentionally doing wrong in the name of marriage. And Allah Tabarakul wa Ta'ala mentioned wa ankihu ayma minkum wa salihin and marry from amongst you those that are your slaves and the righteous. The likes of this ayah, for example, the rules when it comes to a free person and a slave person, it is not compulsory for you to marry somebody who's your slave. Therefore, that ayah constitutes that marriage is not watching. But Allah brought that in the Quran showing you even the issue of marrying a slave, if you like, and you're free, you can do it, rather than making a zina. And we know this was a social status. If I'm a slave owner, and I have some slaves, we know that that slave owner, he could not marry that slave, or marry that slave. And if it's the issue of warfare, and they got those people, as right hand possessed, <coughs> they can have a relationship with her, and it's not considered zina during that time. While they still have to have fair treatment, good housing, good food, in some cases, those slaves inherited. They almost became like part of the family. Not like slavery that we know in the Western Hemisphere. But even that person that didn't have to marry a slave, Allah told them it's better for you to marry the slave from amongst you who's righteous than to make a zina. While this is a uh, uh, what we call a social class issue, you know, you marry the slave, people gonna say, Dad, can you marry the slave? Just on GP, because you're the slave owner. You got land, money, you come from a big tribe. Why would you marry somebody who's a slave if you could marry a free lady? But Allah mentioned that to show you the virtue of marriage. That marriage is not a game. Marriage is something that has a great virtue. When we talk about the issue of marriage, it also includes the issue of riba, fosterage in Islam, which is not that you're going to raise the person and give them your name. No. Fosterage here means that person has to be breastfed by the lady. So what? That that lady can have that kid in the house around her without sitting in the house with the hijab on for 14 hours because that child is not a mahrum for that lady. Meaning that boy is too big to be around that lady because it's not his stepmother, it's not his biological mother, but the father had the boy and raised the boy. Like we say, my God, son, my God, you know, daughter from our culture. The aunt said that same thing. So some people, they raise kids, and then when he got married, when that kid grows up, guess what? If it's a boy, you got a problem on your hand. 
You got a problem on your hand. And that's one of the things that they bring in the books of marriage because marriage is so great, it covers all kind of issues that's tied to it. And this is one of them. There's a story, a real life story, where there was a car accident. One of the ulamai told the story. And everybody in the car died except the little girl. The little girl might have been one, two, or three. So some of the people who knew the people who got killed in the car crash, the little girl, they went to the hospital and they took the girl, you know, legally. And so they're raising this girl and No, it's a little boy, pardon me, a little boy. And so, as the boy grew up, now they need to figure out, what do we do? Do I have to cover, the mother said, which is not his mother, but it's the mother in the marriage with other children and this husband. So, do I have to come, if I got to go to the bathroom, put on my hijab. If I got to go to the kitchen, put on my hijab. How do I treat this boy? Can I sit with him like he's family? Or can I not sit with him like he's a stranger? Some of us don't understand that concept because we sit with strangers. But this is the religion. So what do you do in a situation like that? There's nowhere for that boy to go. He has no other recourse. Everybody died in a car accident. You took him in. Now he's in pubic. What do you do? Huh? He needs to get married. He needs to get married. <laughs> 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 Marriage is the subject of, of the subject of discussion, and subhanAllah. I'm not even gonna speak. Yani there's a, that, there's an issue here when we talk about the issue of <coughs> riba, breastfeeding. Because Rasulullah mentioned in many hadiths. The child, and there's a difference of opinion, whether the child suckles once, whether the child suckles three times, five times, the issue is the child has to drink from the breast milk. If the child drinks from the breast milk, I'm a lady, for example. If the child drinks from my milk, it's my son. If the child drinks from my milk, it's my daughter. So I said, well, he's not biologically your child, but, Rosellum said, the milk is like the blood. The milk of the lady is like the blood. And that child who drinks is like her children. This is the ruling of Islam. So, if that child has nobody else, and the child is a little child, Meaning that the child has not reached the age of pubic, an amr sahab. It's an easy issue. All you do, suckle the child. If you got milk, that's it. But this particular case, what happens if the child don't suckle and he grows up? Or what happens if the lady marries a man and this boy was raised by this man who she marries? It's not his child. So she can't say it's my stepchild, because if it's a stepchild, then he's mahram for her. Once you marry a lady and you have intercourse, she can never marry your kids, and you can never marry her kids. Mahram. And of course, your own kids, mahram. You can never marry them. So you can be around them with your hair out, and you don't have to cover them. But these kids that come, and they don't suckle from a little, then they grow up, or they come big, what do you do? Sheikh al-Islam Taymiyyah, he said that they do like the story of <clears throat> one of the companions is named Abu Hudayfa. Abu Hudayfa, he married one of the Sahabi, I think it's Um Sulaim. And he had a boy that he raised, like the prophet raised Zayd. And you know, Allah revealed ayat, you, you know, Ma'akana Muhammad and Ba'ahad al-Ibhijalikum. Prophet is not none of y'all father. 
That was because they was raising kids and, you know, bringing them up like orphanage. So that boy was big. He grew up. He ain't suckle. It's not her stepchild, and it's not his child. It's just a guy, a little boy that was raised by a man, and now he's big in the house. So he went to the prophet, so the and said, you know, what do, I, what do I do with this issue? You know? And, and so the prophet of Selim told him, let that boy drink from your wife. Let the boy drink from your wife. Now we got many women that won't let a little baby drink from them. You say, heck no, that ain't my baby. He ain't sucking on me. You better go get some silver lap. <coughs> now what about somebody who's 15? Imagine, you got a boy. He's 15. It's a problem. The wife said, I'm tired of every time I got to move, I got to cover, this, that. You know, I can't be free in my own house. You go to the shake, you get the solution. The shake say, let him suckle from your wife. Khalas, then he's my wife. You go home to your wife and say, honey, salam alaikum. Bring her some flowers. You got her best candy. Oh, mashallah, you're so sweet. I love you. I went to the shake and the shake said that the boy got to suckle. What? All hell will hit the fan. Shepherd is not to me if he said the case of this boy in the hadith, in the story of Abu Hudayfa, the boy named Asalam, his case is unique. He had no other resolve because where was he going to go? And again, remember, the rule of thumb, the Sharia was sent to make things easy, not difficult. So, many of the ulama, they said no. That's abrogated. That was only for him, that's it. And nobody else doing that <laughs> after that hadith. Because we ain't seen nobody else do it from the companions, the tabi'in, nobody. Meaning a grown and pubic boy suckled from a lady to become mockum in the house where he's raised because of another man who's his guardian or what you call, you know, raising him up. But she was not telling me, he said, if someone has a case that's similar to this in the hadith, then that would apply for him too. While, Sheikh, while Imam Muhammad was talking with me, about time he said no. He said because during the time when the prophet told Abu Hudayfa to let his we will say godson in our culture, who he raised up but he didn't give him his name, but he raised him. Let that boy suckle to solve the problem from your wife, although the boy is 15, 14, he's in pubic. Remember uh, uh, what they mean? He said, the reason the prophet said that because their fosterage, the way they used to do it, hadn't been prohibited yet. The ayat where Allah prohibited them to foster and give the boy their name and this and that, had to come down. So that's why the prophet told Abu Hudayfa, go let him suck. He said, check what they mean. But once Allah sent the ayah down that Zayd is not your son, so-and-so is not your son, you can't raise him up like that, he said, then that rule in itself can't be applied. Because now, the whole issue is haram. So you see how Sheikh al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah of 800 something years ago, he had one opinion to solve an issue. While Sheikh Uthaymin of that time said, no, we ain't going for that because that thing ain't right from the get go because it's abrogated. It's abolished. So, how can you take something that's abolished and use it as an amendment? If something is abolished, you can't bring that thing to the Congress and say, you know, we want to pass this and not. We know that in the everyday law. The same way in the law, the rules of Allah. So the point here is that look how serious marriage is. All of these issues that show you it's not a game. We're going back to our time now. Where the people think the marriage is a game. They think it's something that 
All it is is just the issue of sexual objects laying down and that's it. No. It's a serious union, serious system. And Allah Tabarakul wa Ta'ala's messenger talked about that as it relates to making the mahram easy. Khairu Sadaq Aisa. The best marriage gift is the easiest one. What does that mean? The best marriage gift is the easiest one. Okay, I'm going to call. What does that mean? Come on, brothers. Don't act like y'all be talking about this all the time, man. Wallahi, now y'all quiet. We can't say a church mice because we're in the mosque. We're going to say it as a, as a mosque mice. Come on. We want some talk. We want some feedback. When you listen to the, the rules online, what am I asking the people? They're asking this and that. They think quiet chicks. I do. Answer. So, what do you do in this case? Rabbi Salem said the best marriage gift is the easiest. We want to take the word marriage gift. This is English, by the way. Rabbi Salem said, Khairul Sadaq. He didn't say Khairul Hadiyah. Hadiyah in Arabic means gift. He said Sadaq. But when they translate that, because remember we deal with problems before, in the marriage, and after. Look how we understand this is one of the problems. It said marriage gift. When it comes to the mahr, it has the word mahr, has the word sadaq, from the word siddiq, truthfulness, nihla. Uh, all of these words mean the same thing. As they said, the women in Philadelphia, they said, you got to pay before you pump. You know, you got self-service gas. And then you got the gas, you know, you got to pay first because you might fill your car up and drive down the road and ain't pay. They say you got to pay before you pump. <laughs> Why do you think they're telling the brothers that? Because the brothers marrying, they pumping gas. No, they're not pumping gas. They pumping honey and they ain't pay. You don't go to the BP gas station or the Circle K or, or Exxon and pay and drive off, what you do? You go inside and you do what? You pay. And then you what? You pump. Now you got the Muslim. The one that Allah Tabarakul wa Ta'ala has blessed you with. The one that Allah Tabarakul wa Ta'ala threatens you. If you harm her, he's going to take revenge. The one that Allah Tabarakul wa Ta'ala told her and if you go in a separate ways, you'll take, you take them inside I'm going to give y'all a risk. Don't worry. You ain't going to be out in the cold because you divorced. I'm going to take care of you. That same woman, you're supposed to pump and not pay. Marriage gift. This is an English problem. And for some brothers, it's a mentality because they think just give her a little gift and that's it. No. The Prophet said, Sadaq Aisa. The best Sadaq. The word Sadaq, the ulama, they said, comes from the word Siddiq. It shows how truthful you are, first of all, when you sit down with the lady. That's why it has the word Sadaq. Or you run in the game. Or you want to lie to her, shoot games just together. You intend on marrying her and make her think you're going to give her what she wants, but then you don't give it to her. Or you intending on marrying her, but you know you don't really want her, but you want to follow your desire. Like they say, you know, it's halal sex. So the first time she do something you don't like, but if you use, then you divorce her. Siddiq, truthfulness, a sadaq. That what you give, it shows your truthfulness. They have a thing, the Arabs, they do it. I don't know, maybe some African Americans are doing it, but I know. The Arabs do it, not in defense of the Arabs. Because I sat with some Arabs and they came with this thing and I said, wow. The Hab, yani, they call it, and Fihi, yani, uh, to some, yani, uh, it has a faulty meaning to begin with. They call it Al-Mahru, Al-Mahru, al
Mark Rowe, مؤخر مؤخر الصدام ايوه اه مؤخر الصدام مؤخر الصدام جزاكم الله خير وات از ذس مين؟ ذس مين They play in the game. They take in the world and they change in the concept. It's like you said, they try to get some free, free booty. They say, we give you a mahr, a sadaq, because that's in the ayat of the hadith. But what we're going to do, we're going to give you a little bit now, and then give you a little bit later. Sheikh Uthman Qumisi said, halalaysa be sadaq. He said, this is not sadaq. And he gave the, the example, he said, They also have something that if you wanted to do that, then it would be called a shruta sahih, a good condition. And that would mean the lady would say, aside from the whole what you're giving her to marry her, give me $5,000 if you ever divorce me. So if the man says, okay, I agree, if I ever divorce you, here's $5,000. That's called a sadaq. That's called a good conditional agreement. But what they did, they took the term sadaq and applied it to something funky to play a game. The shaky said, so the one who says this is sadaq, the lady wants to get married. She said, give me $5,000. He said, I'm going to give you $2,000 now, and I hold the three, so if I ever divorce you, then I'll give you the three then. He said, if that's Sadak, what happens if the man dies and he gave her $2,000? Do he owe a debt to that lady or not? Yes. If the man and the woman agree, she gets tricked. This is Sadak. She said, I want 5G. I know Rido comes to Allah. Said Qayyim. So Tika al Fain al An of a Tita Talat Alam Ida al Talat Ida al Talat of Kat. He said, I'm going to give you two now, and I'll agree to hold the three, and if I ever divorce you, I'll give it to you. If that man dies, she don't get nothing. Because the agreement they just made was if you divorce me, I get the three. But if the issue is Sadaq for real, The mahr, the diary, even if he dies, it's a death on him. Because that's her hak to get the mahr. It's not her hak to make an agreement, if you ever divorce me, give me so-and-so. You can do that, but that's not her hak. Her right for you to lay down with her, rather to be close enough to smell her perfume, you got to give her what Allah Azza just said, a sadaq. You have to. And that's what the Prophet said in the hadith which is collected in the Mu'jam of the Tabarani, Rijal of Utiqa, called the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the authentic hadith, he said, Are you Rajulain? Any man? This is my Jaden. Listen very closely. Are you Rajulain? Any man? Yet the Zawwaja Amra'atan marries a lady. <coughs> على صداق قرنها أو كثو whether he agrees to give her a small marriage dowry or a lot ثم ولم يأتي حقها ومات لقي الله تبارك وتعالى يوم القيامة زانا said any man that enters into marriage with a lady. Remember, we said nikah has two meanings. One of them means to tie into something, whether you tie two roots of a tree together, two ropes together, or to enter to tie a contract. And the other word, the other meaning part of nikah means to have intercourse. If someone say any man that enters a marriage contract and has relations with that lady, and he promises her the sadaq, Whether it be a little bit or a lot. Remember, we said the Hadith of Salam, he said, Khairu Sadaq Aisha. The best marriage, Sadaq, diary is the easiest. We're going to come back to that. And then the man don't give it to the lady. He don't give it to the lady. 
I'm going to give you two now and give you three later. Or I want a car. Okay, Charlotte, give me two years, I get it. You've been married to her five, six, seven, eight years. Guess what? She ain't got no car yet. The son of said, and then the man dies, he meets a law on the day of judgment as a Zan, a man who made the adultery. Mm -hmm. A man who made the adultery. So now, let's go back. Why did he tell him? He said, the best Sadat is the easiest one. So you can give her a book, a scarf, a qatim al hadid, an iron vein, $50, a Walmart gift card, Thanksgiving turkey card. You think really like that's what the prophet meant? She ain't worth nothing. Well, lie. Some of the ulama said the reason the prophet said the, 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 the best one is the easiest one doesn't mean that it's inexpensive or has no value. But what is intended here, it makes it easier for you to get married. Because remember, the object of the Sharia is to make things easy, not difficult. Imagine brothers want to get married and the, 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 the thing to get you in the door is just impossible. That wouldn't be rahmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll give you an example. I'm going to talk about this to make the point, but sometimes it shows the brothers up. I'm a blind man. I've been blind for three and a half years. Alhamdulillah, And I'm pleased with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah blessed me to be able to see I know what things look like from experience. I was able to seek knowledge, learn, and look, I'm still being a benefit to myself and others. May Allah accept that I mean. But the Prophet said, "If that to the Allah, call the Nabi Sallam, call the Tabarakul Wa Taala, yani if that to the Allah, Abdi, call the if that to the if that to the Abdi, if to the Abdi, be." Habibatehi. Allah said, if I test my servant, if I test my servant with his two beloved ones, what do you think two beloved ones means here in this hadith? Eyes. 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 Now stay with me. We're going to go back to Khairul Sadaq Aisra. Why the Prophet said that. And we're talking about something being yani, possible. Not getting over, but being possible. Here the Prophet he said, if Allah said if he tests his servant with his two beloved things. He didn't say two beloved things means his ears, two beloved things means his legs, his arms, his two, uh, his two uh, um, sons, his two daughters, the two twins, his two wives. He said his eyes. If Allah tests him with those two. And then the Prophet said, Wasabra, and he's patient. Oh, what Allah will be in my Jannah. Then Allah will replace, he will get a rebate, a rebate, and on the day of judgment, for his eyes being taken away, the Jannah. So now let me ask you a man like that marries a lady. The lady says, I want Hajj. The man don't work. Not because he's lazy. Because I get disability. You get disability because you work. Huh? And remember, I spent eight years in Yemen, three and a half in Egypt, one in Saudi Arabia. So that I means I was working as a young man. And I'm still young. 54 years old. Alhamdulillah. I'm on disability. The lady said I want a car. And I want Hajj. I know that go well. I ain't got no Hajj money. And show them how no ability to get in the car. But look what the prophet said. It would have been better to make something easier for me because I could have got married. But look what I did. I put my trust in Allah. I know my ability. I said, okay. This is the thing that's permissible. To ma'akro sadaq to the lady. With the intention that you're going to give it. Not with the intention you're going to play the lady. Or, ma'ajjal 
So no, or to give it on the spot. So obviously I couldn't give it on the spot. I didn't have the car. Couldn't take one high. Didn't have the money. I didn't even have a passport at that time. Had to pay money to the government to get it back from being overseas and going through the embassy and all of that. Okay. In two years' time, I still had the vision then, but it was going bad. I took a job as an imam in Asheville. Part of Allah's nikmah, they went to the auction and bought, brought me a Zuzu Rodeo. They said it's the brunt of the SUV, 2001. But listen, that rodeo go all over the world. And the only thing it won't do is go on water. It'll rust out before the engine and stuff go bad. I'm telling you, it's, it, it runs. So that car was fixed up. Spent a lot of money, got it straight, and it was mine. But that wife was doing the driving because I wasn't driving no more. Okay, then I got some money from a lawsuit. But I knew I couldn't make it no hard. You got dad, I got my passport. So we go to the table to negotiate. I said, listen, I can't take you on Hodge. And, you know, why don't we negotiate it down to an Umrah? Let me negotiate it down to an Umrah, and then if Allah will make it okay, I'll take you on Hajj. But don't make it part of your mahra. Why am I doing that? Khair al because the best marriage diary is the easiest. Not the inexpensive. Here's a book, here's a scar. So, the lady said, okay. Umar is good. Then I thought about it. I said, but I still got a lot of debt. I got to pay this and that. And I had a nice piece of change. I said, why don't you let me find out what are some of the prices for Umrah? Now, sisters listening, I guarantee at the end of this story, somebody's going to ask me, do I want to get married again? I said, this is a brilliant guy. SubhanAllah. I said, why don't you let me see how much is the Umrah the different prices, and then let me give you what it will cost to take your umrah. And let me give you the rodeo, if you like the rodeo. At this time, the rodeo got brand new tires, brand new shots, all the stuff fixed on it, GPS with the video camera, and this and that, and, uh, and I mean, it's running. They said, okay. I signed the rodeo over, that's her car. I went the price of Umar. I said, well, they got some for $1,800, $2,200, $4,000, I said, I'm going to give you 4G. Bah! 4G cash. In fact, take this too as a gift. Don't have nothing to do with it. Khalas, the deal is settled. I don't owe a nathan. That's a man who's on disability, but putting his trust in the law to do what's right. And from Salem said, Khairan Sadat Aysom. That was made easy for me. But brothers try to make it where if the lady wants something, she's in contradiction to the sunnah. If the lady said, give me a thousand dollars. I remember when East Orange, the brother was married and sister for Sada Sahi Bukhari, a gym bag. And they was dogging the women. I'm telling you, dogging the women. Mm. Beating them, breaking bones, <laughs> some of them getting high, smoking crack, making Zena. You, you're doing all of this to the woman? But you only gave her 40 hadith. You only gave her a set of Bukhari. You only gave her two jibbah. So Imam Abu Muslim, and he said in the, one of the talks, he said, no brother's going to marry any more of our women in our community except for a humble price of $1,000. The brothers went crazy. What? A thousand dollars? I'm older than that. These bits ain't worth no thousand dollars. Now how do we not go to that than that? Are you serious? <laughs> they want the sister for a dollar fifty cent with tax. Are you serious? Anytime you get ready, you're going to tell a lady that. Give me my right. She got a headache. The Yulu was hurt. She's sick. Give me my right. You want your food cooked. You don't want it cold. You want your clothes washed. This, that, and the third, you don't want to give enough. So the good brothers kept getting married. It was paying the G. But guess what? The divorce rate went down. Because number one, now the lady, if she want to get funny, like sometimes the women do, 
I want a cooler. She got a couple hundred thousand dollars. And that brother, he didn't invest it. He gave a thousand dollars. He didn't give some books that he could just go get. A thousand dollars was a lot for some brothers. So he's going to think before he throw away, argue this and that. So what's the point? The brothers got to stop manipulating the hadith of the Prophet for our situation. Yeah, the Prophet gave, you know, 400 yani, dirham, 300 dirham, you know, in some of his marriages. But Allah most of again, Allah Azza wa said <coughs> to give them kintara. And the Quran. Kintara is a, a pile of gold. A pile of gold. So what's the point? As we narrow it down. The issue of the mahram, the sadaq is serious. Brothers can't be married to sisters and don't give no sadaq. And stop calling the marriage gift and then think like you're just giving her a gift from the store. You can give a to her. You don't have to give a to her. You can, you know, make her feel bad. She can relinquish it. Not, not the sadaq. And for Salem, he said, any man to play that game, whether it's for a little or a lot, in the name of a sadaq, and you don't give it, he trick her, he die, he gonna make a long day of judgment like he was out there with a hole on the, on the corner. Somebody in the bar, Zani. Why, in the name of marriage, you living with a Zani. Yo, yeah. Who want to meet a law like that? And guess what? You still got a debt on your head. You owe her. This is one of the things of after the marriage or in the marriage. People think, and this is for the sisters too. What you do, I ain't with him no more. I moved on. I ain't with her no more. I got me another wife. But all that wrong you did, all that dhulam you did to him, oppression sister, all that wrong you did to that sister, if you don't make toba and you still owe her, she still owe you, you still slandering her, she still backbiting you, y'all will pee on that thing going to be right there at the edge. Looking at you. It ain't going nowhere. Because this is the greatness of marriage. This is the greatness of marriage. So, Allah, it's a lot. We just skimmed the surface. We got a lot when we talk about the conditions of marriage, Wali and you know the the, 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 the witnesses and all of that, you know. A lot of some brothers to get them married with no Wali. How you doing that? With no Wali? And we know the Hanafis, <laughs> they they believe in their left hand, you can get married without a Wali. What? Time, right? No, the, 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 no time. No, no, I'm just saying, but they, their belief is that if she's been married once before, then if, if she got divorced, if she remarried, then they'd say the Wali is not necessary. The Hanifis, right? So you're a Hanifis scholar. <laughs> you want to come over here? No, no, no. I'm just asking. I'm 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 um, Tabarukh wa ta'ala gave him that ability. That he don't have to have the wali ship. He's the wali. We know that in the hadith so what about yani, a, lady mara, a lady came and gave herself to the prophet. Looked up and down and said, Allah have no need for you. Mm -hmm. And one man said, I'll marry you, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. said, okay, what you got? Said, I ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. <laughs> that's, a, that's what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Almost done. Uh, I'm Mary Shay. And they got a pot or a boot. That hold up with a foot to the left. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to give you this garment. I said, You can't do that. If you do that, you're going to be half naked. <laughs> he said, do, do you have anything? Not even an iron ring? Now, what woman want an old raggedy iron ring? But the point is, you got to give her something. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point the prophet was making. Not that's all she worked. You understand? Then from Salem said, Do you have any Quran? He said, Yes. He said, I'm married to her for what you have in the Quran. What well, lie? Brothers, you got Quran? But all you teaching the women. Even if you say, I'm going to marry her, she's going to accept my knowledge I got. You teaching the women now. You're not teaching the women, you're watching movies. You fighting, arguing, 
You know what I mean? Keep it in the house, don't go nowhere. And you ain't teaching. But you say, you know, I married her, you know, so I can teach her the dean. Love most time. And what life? It's sad because the women get a lot of light, a, a lot of a lot of their rights violated. We're not saying the women stick and span. We're gonna deal with the women. They gotta be put in check too. Because they got a lot of evil that they do in the name of marriage. A lot of street stuff. But we talk about the men because they the majority. He don't want to give her no marriage gift. And he don't want to pay no light bill. And he don't pay no cell phone. And he don't pay no cable. And he don't buy no food. He don't put no gas in the car. She ain't got no rights. But the first time she tell him, okay, you're not giving me nothing, I'm not giving you no sex. He's going to fly through the roof. How? Really, think about it. How? Let's reverse it. You're doing everything you're supposed to do. Somebody going to say, I feel good in America. Yeah, we're in America. And a lot of Razak in America, too. He's the one who gives the risk even in America. If you're in doubt, you got a problem in our people. Borderline Kufa. Allahu Razak in Saudi Arabia, they say, America. He's the one who gives in Saudi Arabia, but he's not the one who gives in America. Who we get this from? SubhanAllah. Let's switch the role. You're taking care of business. Again, I, I don't toot horns, because I don't even drive. But I'm making the point, and brothers should be ashamed. You have a man who's on disability blind. My wife ain't paying no rent. You understand me? And we ain't living in no, you know, Section 8 roaches and this and that. No, we ain't doing none of that. Whatever suitable we choose, I pay the rent. Like they said, pay before you what? Uh -huh. I ain't what? That's right. And the paying starts at the mako. It don't end there, though. You got brothers that's physical, willing, strong, muscular. You won't take care of your responsibility. Don't you feel like to the island? You don't do nothing. And then the first thing you want to say, I'm the man. Well, because you have a, a private part, okay, you're a male. You're a male. But you ain't no man. Part of a man is that you feel embarrassed that you can't take care of your responsibility. Allah must die. So this is a big problem. You don't want to give the lady no rights. You want all your rights. And this is, this is wrong. As for Adil Zawaj, and then we'll wind down with this. The issue of plural marriage. Well, not. It's a difference of opinion whether or not a man should have more than one wife or have one wife. Now, I'm not trying to start now. And I ain't no punk. Listen, my wife watch. I ain't no punk. I've been married before with two wives, 20 something years ago. It's a young cat, mashallah, learning the experience. I'm not telling you don't marry another wife. I'm trying to tell you don't play with the deen of Allah to marry for the other. I'm trying to tell you it ain't a girlfriend, boyfriend in the name of marriage. I'm trying to tell you Allah might test you. Some of these women might put a knife in your chest because the stuff you're doing is physical and mental abuse. You don't even realize it. It's a serious issue. And then on top of that, all of the rulings, you got debt on your head. And on top of that, you're going to meet a law fornicator just because you didn't take care of business. The scholars disagree. Some of them said, Allah said two, three, four. That means this is preferable. Others said, you know, that the Prophet Sallam had more than one wife. This is the proof. Others said, but you know in the beginning he only had what? One, Khadija. And others said, Allah said, If you have an inkling, not just you fear, no, if you even think that it's going to cause you not to give them something that they do, Allah said, you better stay with one. Hmm. Even to the point, some ulama, they said, 
it becomes macro for you. To marry another wife, if you know it's going to take from your obligation with your parents that you have an obligation to in their old age. Hmm. They didn't say haram, because you're still doing and taking care of them, but you're going to slap because you got married. You can't handle all of the balls at one time. Said so this dislike. And you know if something is dislike, it can use the devil to haram. It can also go to the level of now it's haram. So, Imam al-Shafi'iyu is one of the ulama that said, the order of the marriage, you should be with one. He said, and this is because Allah said, because you take a chance every day when you marry more than one wife that you might be unjust to one again. He said, so it's safer. Well, Imam Ahmed said it's recommended. Recommended to have more than one. But what's the point? We don't think like that. We don't think with the head that's up high, if you know what I mean. Allah Musta'an. And it's a shame because you're talking about people not only married, you got kids in the game now. What's it going to be like if your kids witnessing all of this fit in the name of marriage? You really think your son is going to want to grow up and treat a wife, you know, get married and treat a wife in the way that he should? No. Can you blame your daughter if she, you know, gets in pubic, she's 18, where she can leave the house, she take off hijab, she don't cover no more, and she say, I ain't never getting mad. Hmm. In fact, I'm going to be a lesbian. Hmm. Can you blame her? If all they see is violation after violation after violation, even the way we speak and deal with one another. It's a serious issue. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, again, many of the scholars said the nikah is it's allowed for you. That's a rahmah. It's a, a mercy, a privilege. Allah said, Hunna li wa antum li You are covered for them, and they are covered for you. How close is the cover? Well, you have the cover on you, you know, hang it like a mosquito net, or is it on your body? It's on your body. Allah described the mates to be like that with one another. But we got all kind of insincerities, all type of games, all type of disobedience, and this is the result of how we do before in the marriage. Then we end the marriage. And then after the marriage, we're still doing the same thing because you just go to the next relationship and you start all over. You just start all over. Like the door makes it. You just stay in and keep going around. Allah Mustafa. So inshallah tabarak wa ta'ala will stop here as it relates to the issue of marriage. And wallahi, again, we said this is the issue. The brothers are advised. Go read about these issues. Wallahi, brothers are ignorant. They have no idea to talk with some of the brothers about marriage. All they know is say it's the sunnah. It's the sunnah. It's the sunnah. What sunnah? <laughs> sunnah to man. Sunnah to iblis. Sunnah to iblis. Subhanallah. And then the women sometimes, they be ignorant. You know, they get wrapped up in this emotion. I love him and this and that. He's fine. And, you know, I don't want to leave him. And Allah most uh, This is to the level of shirk. We say, you know, wasunnu khayr. Reconciliation is better. You know, a tabarruk was asked when kiptum, yani Allah, when kiptum shikar kabayni huma thabatu hakaman. If you sense from that lady, or you even feel something about to go down, she tripping, bring somebody from her side, your side, and her side. If you want to fix it. But sometimes the people don't want to fix it. They want to just keep riding, riding, riding to the car break right down. Well, subhanahu wa ta'ala said the same thing about the lady that in the shoes. That she could, you know, relinquish something, you know, to keep the relationship. You look at the hadith of Soda. Mm -hmm. When she came to the Prophet, she said, you know, I'm afraid you, you're going to divorce because she was getting older. She wouldn't like the other wives. 
He said, I want to be your wife in this life and in the hereafter. And if you divorce me, I won't be your wife in the hereafter. Mm. So here, take my night and give it to Aisha. Mm. But keep me, don't divorce me. Well, why? When women try to negotiate with the husband because he tripping or something that he don't like, well, why? You got some of her friends to tell the girl, you crazy. I wouldn't do nothing to that joke. Believe him. Uh-uh. No, nah, you making it easy for her? Girl, shoot. You must be crazy. Mm. This is part of the prophetic revelation. Our, this our mother sold that. What's more important, to keep a good man in this life and have him in the hereafter, or to be selfish? And yeah, we know the women that have a deal. We don't like nobody, you know, along with the iron, with your man. You want to keep him all to yourself. But this is the deal of Allah to Barak And I remember when Egypt, I asked Sheikh Farah Zahran in Iskandaria, 2010, about this issue. He was married, not the wife I got now, I had another wife. Said Sheikh would lie. She said, I better not take no second wife. She gonna kill me. <laughs> I said, Madam Rahim, you have that hope. What's your opinion about this statement? They said, Well, lie. How the poof? Yeah, this is poof. <clears throat> Straight up. Now, you think the Sheikh didn't know what he was talking about? He had two wives himself, and one of them died in a car accident a couple of years ago. The Sheikh knew. But listen. If the brother going to go home to his wife and don't do the right thing, he's going to go home and tell the wife everything from the other house. Yeah, you know, my wife, she cooked the rolls, mashallah. She, the sister, she threw that. Mm. Wife looked at him like, nigga, what? <laughs> <laughs> she don't say that, but it's written across her face. You got a coming to tell me I ain't want to hear nothing about her. But she don't say it. She hold the patience. She want to blow up. Did he get in the argument? She said, you know, you're wrong. You make me sick. How can you say it to your husband? Look how you talking to me. I'm wrong. I make you sick. Man, I should have stayed across town. She don't talk to me like that over there. Are you serious? You comparing? You, you know, you, you putting this stuff like putting a hand on the fire of the coal. And we're like, we're hurt. Sometimes it's the second wife, she get done like that. She get done like that. The first wife, she could do all the wrong. To Balrach, go out, not cover right. Talking vanity, doing all kinds of stuff on the internet. The second wife, do one thing, he on like the Taliban. I'm almost done. So you should be saying that. So you can't go here. So don't do this. So did you pray? So you should be fasting. Are you serious? And then sometimes we heard the brothers do the first wife wrong, as in the case we're talking about now. Come and telling her, making her enraged, this, that, comparing her. Long time. And it's not befitting. It's not your right to do her like that. Just do them. Likewise, you want them to be friends. You should go, you know, go out to lunch with her, you know, it's your sister. Allah must die. Imagine she had the ability, and Allah knows they don't have the ability, except that, you know, it's out of their makeup. But imagine she had the ability to have two husbands, and she came and told you everything about the other husband. You'll be in a rage. Yeah, man, he wears his boxers nice. He ain't got no stomach. Your stomach <laughs> came to the ground. You'll be upset. Allah. Yeah, mashallah. Brother got a nice recitation. SubhanAllah. You chop him with the Quran. Still saying, Ibn Dillah Salahim. Should be Ibn Nais Salahim. saying, Ibn Dillah Salahim. You'd be upset. Yeah. But we don't, we don't do like Prophet Salaam said, you know, do unto others as you want them to do unto you. And what lie? The hawk is, the best women, it was a test for them. So they ain't going away. But what lie? If you're a good husband, you doing the right thing? You're not taking from the mouth of one wife to feed the other wife? Well, not. It's going to be all right. And if that wife leaves, <coughs> guess what? Life still goes on. But the wrong that you do to her ain't going nowhere. It's going to be something that you're going to be punished for in this life, 
during your lifetime, you're going to catch a lot of evil, a lot of hardship. You may get restriction of wealth. You may become sick. The wife you got may leave you. You may end up by yourself. All kind of stuff. And then guess what? When you die, you stand on the day of judgment, you're going to have all this stuff waiting on you. I say, man, what's all of these, you know, deeds said? Like, man, I was this sinful in the door of your life? Don't say, no. These are the deeds from your wife. You owe her. You ain't got nothing to give her, so she gave you all of her bad deeds. Man, it's a serious issue. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us as it relates to these issues. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us God fear. Allah, we have to fear Allah to Allah wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us grateful for one another. Because marriage is an issue that we should be grateful. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us believe and live like believers, mm -hmm. not like those who are disbelievers. Mm -hmm. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us rectify our Islam as a model in society, and society can only be a model when the houses are correct. We ask Allah wa ta'ala to purify us from our sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from that which is disobedience and abation. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us in this life and hereafter. Any questions, comments, corrections? I took the light on y'all today. We've got from 4 to 8 tomorrow. I'm going to turn it up. So make sure y'all bring y'all boxes of Kleenex and, um, you know, how y'all going to fix this stuff. I'm going to stop. Yeah, shit. Can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? With regards to the Victoria marriages, Taking the second wife, the third nah. wife, wife, whatever. Hey, um, you know, there's a lot of sisters who are relatively, as he said, you know, lack of better word, middle aged, who need a husband. Yeah. Is it permissible for a sister to ask a brother who's already married that he is, is she is he in need of her? Mm. Now, the question was asked. This is a very good question. It's one of the lessons we're going to deal with tomorrow. There's a lot of sisters, and that's no doubt. Rosella mentioned that there will be the, the, the ratio. He's just showing there will be 50. Huh? Then you want to leave? We can't disrupt the end. Rosella would delay the salon to midnight for the end. Did you know that? Isha can be delayed until midnight. We're not saying that's what we're going to do, but the point is we do that because the series of knowledge. Then people will go home and watch movies and somebody will get high and smoke a joint. I'm not saying you, but this is what we're dealing with. Yes. If you want to pray like Ma'awiya was leading so the back where the man came in, the slot was long, he went to the side, prayed short swords and left. Wad said, because he heard him in the background praying, when he finished, he said, who was that? He said, it was so-and-so. He said, well, now he's a monopic. He's a hypocrite. When the story got to the prophet Sallam, the prophet said for Ma'ad to that man, he said, yeah, Ma'ad, a fatan unto ya Ma'ad, are you a fitna maker? But the word fatan, Allah wasn't shaitan, meaning are you a shaitani fitna maker, Ma'ad? Ma'ad is one of the scholars of the Sahaba that the prophet sent to Yemen in 18. One of the ulama of the Sahaba. Look what he did. Because the man couldn't take it. So we say, if you can't take it, you can go to the side and pray and go. But we got to finish this. And guess what? I didn't sleep all night preparing for this. Got to listen to all of this footage in Arabic. Can't read it. I'm blind. Didn't eat because this is important. I live for the Islam and the people. You understand me? I came from South Carolina, 2 o'clock in the morning, Columbia. I ride to Charlotte. Get on the plane at 6 o'clock. Had to wait from 4 to 6. Push me in the wheelchair so I don't have to walk because I'm blind. Which is service they give you. Push you all the way to the door of the plane. Sitting on the plane, buttocks hurt because the chair raggedy. Knees touching the seat in front of me. Here to benefit the people. With no money in my pocket. You understand me? So we're not, we're not trying to keep anybody. It's a Friday night. Thank God it's Friday. Go we'll pray, and you can roll. But we got to handle this. And we'll be here tomorrow from 4 to 8. Anybody think it's long? They can pray and they can roll out. Inshallah, Tabarakul Wa Ta'ala.
and it's so other to interrupt the dogs. This you and worship. Shaykh Islam Taymiyyah said, Abdullah, yani kurbat talab to the end. From the best types of worship is seek the knowledge. But Kala, but the Allah Muqtadi, jihad. He said, brother, the knowledge you use to refuel the innovator is jihad. Mm -hmm. Rasulullah, he mentioned, when the people sit in with somebody who giving them knowledge, all of the animals on earth, including the sea, make dua for you and ask Allah to forgive you. Mm -hmm. You ready to trade that in, man? If you want to, fill out the puzzle. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, me, I'm not trading that in. If the shape let me finish and take another and another, I'm here until the people get tired, not one person. As for the question of Baraka Lofiko, we have a lot of middle aged women. And I imagine the shape didn't say it, I'm going to ask his permission to interject this. And they have nice jobs, they have wealth, houses, because the picture he painted was that. Is it permissible for them to come to a man who's married and say, I'm interested, I have a need for you? <clears throat> Some of the brothers, this is from the daughters tomorrow, we're going to handle it now, they think that they can make a condition with the lady. You want to marry the lady. You sit down and you say, listen, I'm going to make these conditions in the office. I'm not going to give you no mahram because I'm poor. I'm not going to pay no rent. You got the house. I'm not going to obey no food. I'm just going to be your man. Take care of you. Make love to you. Be your companion. And that's it. She said, okay. No problem. Is this halal or haram? Uh -huh. It's haram. Somebody said haram. Is it halal or haram? It's haram. Ajib. Haram. Halal or haram? Ajib. Haram. 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 Why? Because this is what's called shrut al-mufsidah. A, a, a condition that yani, is a bad condition. And Shaykh Islam Taymiyyah, he said also, there are some conditions that are bad, well, like in an optic, sahih. But it doesn't break the, 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 the contract. He said, but this one, it breaks the contract. Why? Because it's her heart that you give her a mom, you give her you know, a second a place to live, you, you, yani, you pay for her food. That, it's her right. However, the ulama they said there's something called tanazil, that the lady herself, without being a condition, can forego anything from her rights and needs. <coughs> and the example is the hadith we gave her soda. She gave her salam, said, take my night to Aisha. So when her salam, all his wives had one night, one night, one night, Aisha had two nights. Her night and the one that soda gave her. This is the proof that the lady herself can she can say, I don't want you to, you know, worry about this and this, I'm cool. But however, they said, if she was to change her mind tomorrow, then it's binding on you. Huh? If she was to change her mind tomorrow, then it's binding on you. Why? Because it's her right. So you can't make it no condition, first of all, brother. Let's get this straight. You can't go to the table, bargain this, write this down, and that's it to life. But if the woman, she have a money, she have a this, she have that, she needs a husband, and she come to you, as long as you're not taking money away from where you live, because now that's oppression to the other lady. You only got enough for one wife. You can't take and say, well, I got two wives. No. As long as you're keeping the time straight, you love your second wife more than your first wife. Sometimes that happens out here. I don't know. So you say, you know, I'm not going there tonight, you know, it's cold, I'm tired, I'm going to stay here, she'll be all right. You don't have the right to do that. Mm. And she don't have the right to tell you, well, you know what, <clears throat> just go on over there and stay since it's the first wife. I know you love her more than me. The second wife don't have the right to tell you that. You have to stay at the house when it's your time. If she beeping with you, hell, sleep on the couch. She beeping with you, sleep at the other end of the bed. But you can't say, you know what, I'm out. Go to the other house, lay your juice. So yeah, it's perfectly okay. But well, like, this is something that the ulama they will ask before. The origin is don't marry something if you can't take care of. Mm. That's the origin. But there's some exceptions to the rule. What are these women supposed to do? <clears throat> the woman say, "Well, let them go find somebody else." <laughs> <coughs> but that ain't on, on you either. You know what I'm saying? And we're like, like me for example. Well, I have a lot of stuff I want to do. It takes somebody to type proposals, 
to negotiate for me contracts. I shouldn't be trying to scrape no pennies. All this talent I got. I should be going around inspiring people talking, but somebody got to write the contract for me. I got books. Imagine we took just this dose and transcribed to a book. You know the benefit that people can do? But my wife can't do all of that. She's been carrying that long. May Allah bless her for a while, but people get tired. I need another wife if I'm going to do that. And it's perfectly okay. But the situation got to be right. You understand me? Situation got to be to meet Allah to brother for what to Allah on khayr. I don't need no food and no foodie pie. I got that. And I love my wife. It got to be something for the hereafter. So if people come in, in that regard and they serious and they ain't playing no games and they ain't going to be, you know, hurting people's rights and making fitna, that's not the book though. It's your Jews. But the problem is we selfish, we envious, we forgot we didn't have nobody, and guess what? We don't want to do stuff the right way. That's our problem. You know, Tabarak was out to help us. And yes, brothers should get STD tests, AIDS tests, psychological evaluation. She should do that for the brother. Background check, see if he's got a felony, he's got any convictions, if he got any, you know, his name on the child list with you, all of that, do that. This is a serious issue. You mad the brother and the brother damn maniac, you don't know it because you're looking at his beard and his pants above the ankle. What the hell that's going to do? Once you marry him and he busts in your head or stab you or kidnap you or do something crazy. What's he going to do if the lady, you know, got all kinds of psychological problems, this, that, and the third, hormone problems, you know what I'm saying? Maybe she didn't kill somebody. Maybe she, you know, a, 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 a person that you don't even know, like, what type of lifestyle she got. But because she got on a nice dress, or she covered good, or, you know, mashallah, they say, you know, she's a good sister. No, we got to look deeper than that in the picture. Allah. Well, I'm almost dying. Any questions from the sisters? They don't have any questions. Nope. Y'all mad, sisters? I did ask them. Makhlul Y'all got some complaints. We can deal with the brothers in private. We ain't scared of them, you know. We got y'all back. Me and Imam Amwa and Imam Hassan. That's right. We ain't no punks around here, brothers. Days of Taqwa, they used to deal with the brothers. You know what I'm saying? Lord Bob. Hey, Wah. We're going to pray first.